Okay, so we're really happy to have you um, talking with us. Um, and I know in Darwin's age, the cell was looked at as such a simplistic uh, thing. And uh, how, how would it be compared to what we know today? Well, Darwin, in his day and age, they were just beginning to develop microscopes that were very, very crude. Uh, and they would look at the cell as like just a little gelatinous glob of matter that somehow divided itself and, and functioned in different ways, but they had no idea. In actuality, what, what we now know about any living cell, even the simplest bacteria, would be more comparable to the most complicated chemical factory you could possibly imagine, with pipelines leading in and out, and fence lines around the factory that only allowed certain substances and certain materials in so that uh, you, you know it allows nutrients and raw materials to come in but then somehow carry waste products and let them out through the membrane and the simplest bacteria we know of has about 1,000 different parts and they're all specifically designed molecules that bend and fold and twist and form little molecular machines that interact with each other in order for that simple, supposedly simple cell to function. Now, believing as Darwin did that these cells somehow just happened to come together to form life would be like believing something a million times more complex than a mouse trap could have just happened. A mouse trap has like a base and it's got a hammer and it's got a hold down latch and it's got a catch. It's got five parts. Well, you could put those five parts, even if somehow they formed by some random process, in the same proximity, and you could shake them and bend them and fold them and kick them for a million billion years, and it's not going to form a functioning mousetrap. And yet, a, a simple cell is millions of times more complex than that mousetrap. And we are teaching our kids that somehow that did come together by just random chance processes. Mm -hmm. And, and to me, that's, that's just a lie. It's just, we're lying to the next generation when we teach them those sort of things. My generation. Your basically. generation. And I've noticed these things, and I'm trying to speak out against yeah. this. And, um, well, it, and at the very least, I commend you for trying to bring a perspective to people that they're not being allowed to see mm -hmm. in our schools. There's censorship going on in our schools because just that perspective I just described isn't even taught talked about because teachers put their jobs at risk when they do anything that casts doubt on this idea Darwin came up with. Mm -hmm. I guess my last question would be what would you want to say to my generation um, with their questions and everything else, yeah. but, uh, what, what would you say to us? Um, I would say to you guys, and I'm 50, you know, and I have kids your age, so you're really, you're just, they're the next generation for me that we are living in a world that's increasingly becoming deceptive and it's increasingly becoming divided along the lines of the big questions of life. The questions of where did we come from? The questions of, you know, what is life all about? What's our purpose in life? And the ways to answer those questions deal with evolution and creation. You see, if, if evolution made us, then it's just kind of random processes and there really is nothing behind it all. Mm -hmm. But if we were literally created and really recently by a God that personally made human beings and knows us personally, then he also gave us a purpose and a meaning and something to live for other than entertainment or you know, sports or recreation or what we can get out of life because all that's ultimately going to disappear. So what I would say to you guys is, you know, learn how you're being deceived, how you're only being told partial truths and what's being left out, and then do everything you can to share that with others. Because the first question that kind of leads to all these other questions about how do you fix what's wrong with the world? How do you make a difference? What's life all about? It starts with figuring out where did you come from? And if you really are the result of a recent creation by God who knows you, you're going to come up to f with far different answers to the questions of what's life all about, what's important in life, you know, how do I fix what's wrong with the world, than if you came or here as a result of evolutionary processes. And the whole idea that God used evolution contradicts a lot of science that you're not being told about. Long answer to a short question, 
brief answer is share the truth with others. Do it with love, not, with, not in a condescending way. Ask questions that are going to help them to start search for the, the right answers. Okay? Yeah. I, like you were saying, like the philosophical implications of evolution are, are so much dangerous. And, and so, they're huge. Yeah, it's just it's and, scary. It's, I mean, it, and it's got its tendrils everywhere. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden the Constitution is a living document, which means we can just interpret it to mean anything we want. Well, where did that come from? We've been interpreting the Bible to mean anything we want it to mean for a couple hundred years with predictable results. People now no longer even trust the Bible to mean anything. Yeah. Well, the same thing's happening in law, in government, in, in, uh, you know, in, in addition to in biology and geology and science. And it's all based on philosophy. The philosophy that let's just explain everything as if God has never been involved. That's in essence what evolution is. And it's just a story to try to explain everything and leave God out. Mm -hmm. So your job is to show people what's being left out. Right. And uh, more power to you. Oh, thank you very much. You're I, welcome. I appreciate it. My pleasure.